I really love my game systems. I love my 3DS. I love my Switch that's plugged in over there, which I've been currently playing on. And one system that I really enjoy out of all of them is this particular system right here, the Nintendo GameCube. Now, this system is a very capable system back even in 2003, but one of the biggest drawbacks to it was the fact that it came with only basically a cable that came with one sound for left, the other one for right, and the other one basically being for your picture. And unfortunately, it only could go up to like 420p for resolution. Now, there is a way that you can get up to 720p through the digital port on the back of the system, but unfortunately, going through that particular port can basically cost you today of about $300. And honestly, you only get up to 720p. So I really started to wonder, is there a way to get better resolution from this box right here? And there actually is. If you use a program by the name of Dolphin Emulator, you can actually get up to 4K. Actually, right now it's actually 5K from that little box I just put on the floor. So in this video today, what I'm going to be teaching you guys on how to get 5K or at least 4K out of your GameCube games. Now, one big disclaimer before we get started with the tutorial is that if you're going to try to get 5K or 4K or any kind of resolution like that, you're going to need to have a computer that's pretty freaking good on the hardware side. I, You guys can check out my hardwares down in the description box below. It'll give you a rough idea of what I'm running and what you should be running, at least in your system, to do this. But you are going to need at least a mid to high end PC to be able to achieve this. And another thing that you guys should also keep in mind that roughly around after 1440p, the GameCube games don't really seem that much different from 14, 1440p to 5K. So I'm going to put that out there. But if you want to get, you know, brag out to all your friends and say, hey, I'm playing GameCube games at 4, or, you know, 4K, 5K, you can choose to do that. Now, one thing I would also really highly recommend is to keep checking out Dolphin Emulator's website on a, I wouldn't say daily basis, but on a, at least a monthly basis. Uh, their site's constantly updating, and they're constantly making the software better and better. Another thing that also kind of sucks about Dolphin Emulator, which I get why they did it, but if you're after the best of the best graphics from your GameCube, you have to have a Windows 64-bit operating system. I, I really don't understand why most people would have a 32-bit anyway, but it's the only way that you're going to be able to use the software with the best visuals in mind. And the reason why I say that is because uh, the 4.0 version did support 32-bit, uh, but they basically dropped that later down in later or in newer versions of the software. So with that said, you're going to want to basically download the software. And it's honestly not that big. Basically, from this point, a program by the name of WinWar should open. If not, please install it. You'll find a link also down in the description box below. So what you guys are going to want to do is go to this PC. C drive. Program files. And from this point, you're going to want to basically drag the file over into here. So drag it in, and it should prompt you to put it in there. Now, I'm not going to do this because I already have a folder that's named something slightly different, but it's close enough. So mine happens to be Dolphin right here, and I'm going to open up the software. So from this point, um, yours is probably going to be empty, but don't worry, you can actually add games very easily. You're going to want to basically click on Paths, make a new folder anywhere in your computer other than your desktop, and the reason I say don't put it on your desktop because you could accidentally delete it. Um, put it in a little bit more of a permanent spot. Uh, documents, anywhere down that line should work. So just find a folder, make a new folder I should say, for example, we'll just use this as an example say click to folder and then your games will like basically dolphin emulator should open up like this 
as long as there's games in that folder. If you guys want to download some games, you guys can find some links down in the description box below. But keep in mind that um, not all games are there. Pretty much, guys, what you need to do from this point, you're going to want to configure the software. And this is where things are going to get really difficult real quick because every single um, computer will run you know, stuff slightly different. <clears throat> For example, um, you have OpenGL, you have DirectX 11, you have Vulkan, you have software rendering, which is interesting. They got rid of DirectX 12 experiment, so I guess it didn't really work out too well, but yeah, you got that. What I would recommend for AMD users, use Vulkan or use OpenGL. For um, NVIDIA users, use DirectX 3D11. The reason I say that is because um, DirectX 12 works, or DirectX 11 works a lot better with NVIDIA, while OpenGL and Vulkan works better with AMD hardware. I'm going to go to Vulkan because that's probably going to be the best that works with this software. And you don't want to go native. Do not go native. This is what the GameCube put out at its regular resolution through those uh, nasty three cables. Well, nasty one cable with two sounds on the left and right. You guys are going to want to go to at least 720p. Or sorry, not 720p. You're going to want to go to 1440p and up. So let's do that. And another thing I would highly recommend for you guys to go find a controller... Now, I use a GameCube controller, but I have a special converter by the name of, uh, let's go to Hyperlink, I just had to look that up, and that enables me to use a GameCube controller. I'll probably make a video about this at some point, but that's what I use, but you can use a normal Xbox 360 controller. Just go in, pick up your Xbox 360 controller, and configure the software to the controller. From this point, once you've added some games, right click, go to Wicca. Well, this will enable you to basically um, see if there's any problems in the games and install some, uh, uh, some particular mods to get the game to run a little bit better. Best ones I find is the 30 FPS or 60 FPS mods <clears throat> and the other one being the widescreen fix. These are very popular mods. I highly recommend to use them. And yeah. Um, there is some 60 FPS hacks that you can also do. But all of them may not work well with the game. Once you guys have done all that. You're going to also have to configure the software to accept the mods. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> sorry, sorry guys. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the mods to turn on. So right here, enable cheats. This is what you guys are going to have to click. If it's not on, click it on. This will allow the geo codes to work. And it will also allow the AR codes to work. Like that, guys. That's how you basically get the better chance of getting higher graphics. Now, you can also go in and configure hacks and stuff. If the game is running really slow, you can also move this to fast. Highly recommend not to because if you run into a situation where the game's trying to go out faster than the game can handle, you will see some issues where um, the game starts to do glitches. Super Mario Sunshine, for example, will have problems where, where it pinked and all that stuff will just cut in and cut out when it's not supposed to. So um, in some cases, just keep it on safe. You can move these ones up. Highly recommend against it because these don't really don't do anything in the game. This is the big one that makes things look a hell of a lot better than they should. This one you don't have to go up. Just keep it at 1. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting. This is where you're going to have to go to the Wicca to find out if you can use these or not. I recommend to keep this on in most cases. But some games will break if it's on. You can also use a widescreen hack with the game, but highly recommend against it when the when most of the Wiccas will have a widescreen fix mod to fix that problem, where the widescreen one may work or may not, may break the game, where these ones will definitely not. Sorry, I can't be more helpful, guys, but 
Every computer is going to get configured slightly different because of different hardware. This is where you're going to have to really experiment on your own end. One thing that I did forget to mention to you guys before I was just about to go, I did talk about the Neo Geo codes and Action Replay codes, but let me show you how to basically get them to basically add and work. Uh, there's two methods to get them to basically add to the software. The first one is to basically go in and download them. Now, from the point that you saw a second ago to this point, I've added two games that are identical, but they're different regions, and I just did that to show you guys something. So let's just basically go into uh, the European version. You can download codes from the internet, and usually these are like most common codes apparently, and it found 17. Let's try that with the American version now. Remember, it found 17. This one found 97 codes. So there's a lot more codes to basically the US version versus the European version. But there's one odd code that never seems to be found when you go to download, and that's this one right here. This is one that I recommend to add to every single game if you can find it, is the 16 by 9 ratio fix. Now there is sometimes also uh, HD packs, and I'll show you how to do that in a separate video. You can also add those. And some particular cases there will be 60 FPS fixes. Um, to give you a rough idea what that exactly means, uh, Meryl, uh, Super Mario Sunshine has one. So if we went in, for example, and went to this Wicca, sometimes you will find 60 FPS uh, fixes like this particular game has, because it only runs at a native 30. So the way that you add codes to the game, you're going to come in, and you're going to click on the game that you want to add an action replay code or Neil Geo. Say edit, and this big list of codes will come up. Go to the end, hit space, confirm what version of the game you have. We're uh, doing the North American version. I like the whole code. Actually, let's let's put the name in first. And this is where you're going to want to pay attention. Put the money sign, paste, enter, copy the code, copy, and paste. Save, exit, and it should be there, right here. And that's how you add codes. That's how you add action replay and Neo Geo codes. And when you have that enabled for the widescreen fix, or 16 by 9 fix, you don't actually have to have the widescreen hack on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video for today. I will basically try to help you out the best I can down in the comment box below. But if you guys enjoyed this video today, remember to hit the like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. What the heck? Guys, look at this. There's a particular port or a particular adapter that allows you to basically plug into the back of your GameCube and get like 720p graphics from your GameCube. Yes, it's not 4K, but you're using your original hardware versus emulation, which isn't perfect when it does screw up on you because it's emulation. This is something I'm probably going to look into on the future, but I do want to tell you guys about it because it is something to pay attention to, and it only costs $999. I'm kidding, only costs $99 versus... 200 first party solution from Nintendo. So, this might be something to look into in the future.